start. Good evening, dear Facebook pure vir urology viewers. Today's topic is on laparoscopic heminephrectomy, a surgical technique-based video presentation by Dr. Chandramon Sir, Managing Director of Preeti Urology and Kidney Hospital and Administrator of Pure Urology. Heminephrectomy traditionally means removal of a part of the duplex moiety collecting system or in a case of horseshoe kidney or cross fused ectopia and so. In the case of malignancy in the era of partial nephrectomies, this heminephrectomy term can be applied in cases wherein there is more than 30% of resection of the parenchyma or excision of upper or the lower poles or cutting resections that involve cutting into the hilar fat or transection of the collecting system. So based on this, the topic will cover both benign and malignant cases. So now I hand over to Dr. Chandramon sir for his presentation. Uh, dear Pure Urology Facebook viewers, today I am uh, speaking on uh, laparoscopic heminephrectomy. As uh, Dr. Soundarya told, uh, when we have selected this topic, we were uh, thinking of uh, presenting renal cell carcinoma involving the poles and coming up to the hilum. But literature wise, it involves mainly upper polar heminephrectomy in a bifid system non-functioning kidney or heminephrectomy for horseshoe kidney. So I will be presenting now. I will share my screen. And uh, this is my presentation laparoscopic heminephrectomy so i am giving a small Before video here i give my talk on heminephrectomy and i am sharing the video here which represents how to do technically heminephrectomy first in the non functioning uh, kidney in non functioning kidney upper pole usually will be dilated if you imagine this is the kidney and this is the upper pole and in this upper pole hydronephrotic kidney will be there and renal artery renal vein will be predominantly for the lower pole only the large dilator ureter will be going into the upper pole there will be a dividing line between the upper pole and the lower pole liver and spleen will be covering so you have to retract them and separate all the thing like hydrocele then we will open empty it and disconnect from the uh, kidney and then one artery and vein will be anterior to that and ureter of the lower pole will be normal. So you have to identify the lower pole ureter, take out all this hydronephrotic kidney below the renal vessels. So ultimately it will be like this below the renal vessels. Renal vessels should not get uh, uh, injured and native ureter of the lower pole should not get injured and rest of the hydrocele type of uh, sac in the upper pole will be removed through the port. This is for the upper pole uh, non-functioning kidney. If you come to the renal cell carcinoma, the important uh, any tumor malignant or benign like this if it is there in the lower pole, predominantly hilum dissection is must. Any axial cut which has normal renal artery and vein origin without tumor, we can attempt a heminephrectomy. So any lower polar vessels to the tumor can be easily divided. That is the advantage. If not, we will dissect and all around parenchyma identified. And then once you divide and tilt the kidney in the lower part, when you turn the surface, axial surface, lower part major vessels will be there. 
they can be clipped rest of the kidney will not have any breeders from the ilar part lower part the vessels will enter into the parenchyma they will be seen on the normal kidney which is left behind and they can be clipped or they can be sutured with uh, vicral like a cross x stitch so with this introduction of the basic surgical technique now i will proceed to the uh, topic and with three videos one for the upper polar heminephrectomy and second uh, zero warm ischemia time heminephrectomy and third uh, normal warm ischemia time around 20 minutes heminephrectomy originally referred this heminephrectomy to the removal of half of a kidney with a duplicated collecting system arshu kidney fused ectopic kidney this is 2005 paper adult urology by laparoscopic heminephrectomy for tumor defines that 30% greater resection of the parenchyma is considered as heminephrectomy removal of at least 30% of the parenchymal mass excision of the upper or lower pole of the kidney cutting to ilar fat and transecting the collection system are the definitions in journal of clinical oncology specific technical considerations in laparoscopic heminephrectomy are achieving adequate surgical margins routine and substantial entry into pelvic calcial system requiring suture repair transection of sizable deep intraparenchymal vessels securing durable renal parenchymal hemostasis transperitoneal approach more favorable all within the time constraints of warm ischemia not to be mentioned undertaken only with considerable prior experience in the minimally invasive surgery this is the first case where 28 year old female patient presented with left loin pain 3 months a large well defined non capsulated multi loculated multi septate lesion of 5.4 into 6.1 into 7.1 cm enhancement present left complex renal cyst Cons uh, coming under Bos Bosnia type three cyst. So this is the picture showing the cyst uh, with uh, irregular enhancement of the wall, uh, fitting into the criteria of the Bosnia type three cyst. Now this, if you see, you will almost rule out heminephrectomy. But reconstructed images should not be seen in the uh, CT images. when comes to the port it is a standard three port initial approach on the left side 4 cm or 4 finger bits above and mid lateral to the umbilicus 15 mm port other two ports in just directed towards the upper pole of the kidney so that we can suture ergonomically and if you see the video this is a video around 20 minutes video where i am initially using the hook generally i use harmonic but here i have used hook initially now i will be comfortable with the harmonic complete mobilization of the colon is essential the most important on the left side is dropping the spleen and all the attachments above the uh, kidney that means splenic vein splenic artery pancreas colon and sometimes stomach also should be retracted complete mobilization of the kidney is very essential in heminephrectomy because hilum has to be dissected completely so here i am doing uh, this part now this is very important part i am mentioning for the juniors that it is a standard now that in any left sided surgery except pyeloplasty and ureterolithotomy in all surgeries adrenalectomy heminephrectomy nephrectomy this step is very essential where identify the plane of the gerotas stay close to the kidney and in the plane of the gerotas you go up to the spleno renal ligament divide it and then with left hand retractor you retract the spleen with that uh, spleen will fall uh, towards the medially see this is the ureter identified now and uh, you should be quite away from the ureter because in heminephrectomy 
chances of ureteric ischemia are there because you will be separating the ureter from the lower pole of the kidney it is the golden triangle you will disturb so sometimes the ureter will get supply from the middle part of the ureter totally so there are chances of ureteric stricture so we are doing standard lifting of the gonadal and ureteric plexus and going to the hilum once you go to the hilum like this we are lifting the kidney now the fourth port will come into action and it will reflect the kidney imagine this is a case of benign condition for an young female when you are doing see i am separating suprahilar region completely all the kidney carefully all the attachments you detach this is like donor nephrectomy till that time do not clamp the uh, renal hilum so now important point what i have learnt after 15 years of experience is mobilize the kidney even the lateral part like in donor nephrectomy let the kidney hang only on the vessels normally we don't do this for radical nephrectomy because it will be falling after the renal artery and the renal vein are ligated we do this type of uh, mobilization but in partial nephrectomy especially in laparoscopy to have complete access to the renal parenchyma for the suturing as well as the surface inspection for cutting this is essential this may not be essential for very small tumors located peripherally but anywhere if you are going towards the hilum completely flip the kidney see i have mobilized all the kidney see this is a one person if you can retract this upper pole attachment is difficult secret is stay close to the kidney keep traction and be in one plane only otherwise you will be moving here and there in obese patient is difficult in case of hemi nephrectomy there is no point touching the adrenal especially lower pole hemi nephrectomy there is no point now you can see lot of fat now you remove all the fat once uh, in uh, benign condition there is no harm in removing all the fat and one more suggestion is do not dissect the artery and vein in the initial phase they may go into spasm for example i am doing this step now this may cause spasm so leave it there mass clamping also can be done unnecessarily meddling here will make the kidney supple and that causes uh, ischemia so at the end when your plan is decided now leave it here and then go to the next step uh, that is mobilizing the uh, all the fat around the hilum this is the most important step in hemi nephrectomy is go to the hilum up to the gilvernet fascia sometimes you open the gilvernet fascia identify all the vessels all the fat everything you have to remove here one important point is ureter can get devascularized so be careful go close to the kidney parenchymal surface not close to the ureter especially with the harmonic which causes transmission of the heat any excessive fat can be removed see now we are seeing the ureter here this is the pelvis and ureter entering into the through the gilvernet fascia careful identification of every structure and going slowly and separating now i am separating close to the kidney the ureter this is the most dangerous step where ureter can necrose especially in benign conditions like this if the ureter gets ischemic it is not good see i am dropping with all fat and adventitious tissue now the entire uh, the this is the hemi nephrectomy where large uh, see if you pull like this ergonomically it will come into advantage so now i am dissecting the pelvis posterior anterior part of the pelvis if any vein is going to the lower pole it can be safely clipped but not the artery here you see the division of the 
renal vein to the lower pole is happening, we can cut it off. Now slowly dissect again. One more vein is going. Careful, very meticulous. Otherwise, upper pole renal vein, if you injure, it becomes nephrectomy. So any artery also should not be clipped along with it. Identify the structures and whatever that is going to the lower pole, you can clip it off. This reduces the warm schema time a lot. Initial clamping and doing all this dissection has no meaning. Now you can see renal artery, which is very closely with the renal vein. Don't dissect too much. Just uh, adequate to place the Setinsky or the Bulldog. It is left side preferable to put the Bulldog. Before you clamp, before you meddle, see left kidney is pull, pulled down by one retractor so that it is stable. It cannot turn. All around parenchyma should be visible. Some people may ask, uh, what is the kidney left behind in this case? I will share the post-operative uh, this thing. You will appreciate that. Now I applied the bulldog. I started cutting exactly in the center, leaving the last cyst. The only thing is that the right hand uh, laparoscopically, one has to retract the kidney so that right hand will be ergonomical to cut the kidney uh, properly in one plane. Otherwise, you will lose the parenchyma or you will open the cyst, which is anyway, the purpose will not be served. See, now I have, I know that posteriorly parenchyma is there. I am taking, pulling this kidney with the left side is important in laparoscopy, which is not necessary in robotic. Because robotic technology is costly, we are sharing how ergonomically this aminephrectomy can be done. Now you see all the close to hilum we have come. Now we will tilt the kidney. This is the advantage of complete mobilization of the kidney. See only small part of the kidney is uh, hanging and that can be divided. Last part will come to the hilum and cl divide closely so that the upper polar vessels, the one which is lifted is the normal kidney. The one which is lifted up is the normal kidney. So ultimately you are hanging on to only these vessels which can be clipped or sutured. See now from all sides you should be careful that you should not cut the ureter. This is a benign condition. Patient may expect uh, some nephrons to be saved. So be close to the parenchyma, that is a secret. See, this is the lower pole infundibulum of the pelvis. I am clipping so that I need not suture, but unfortunately this infundibulum was so big, uh, I have to suture later on. So ultimately this is a large lower pole infundibulum. After this is cut, uh, posteriorly nothing will be there. So we are removing, see this is the ureter and we are dividing rest of the kidney easily. This is the rest of the kidney. We think that the kidney is very small and there is no point saving it. And only can, in this uh, ureter, even though adequate precaution taken, has appeared to be little denuded in the upper part, which happens in heminephrectomy. Now see, one person has to hold and this is the vessel which is hanging freely can be clipped. This is the advantage of heminephrectomy. Now I am releasing the clamp boldly because all the vessels of the lower pole are released. You see uh, after releasing two minutes, one major vessel was there. I kept it. I did not reclamp because reperfusion can occur. The uh, person who is lifting the kidney is very important. See here, one sputter is there. You catch hold of that and apply the clip. You can see that I'm catch holding with the right hand and the, the assistant will come up with and put the clip there. That's all. After that, there is no warm ischemia time. Around 20 to 30 ml of blood loss will be there. There is no need to worry. There will not be any uh, only inner renorophy will be there, outer renorophy will not be there. If you wait for 5 to 10 minutes, if obvious sputter is not there, 
it will help you take breathing time so that you can suture the any vessels directly for this you need advanced suturing skills so that you don't take deep bites see now the ureter lower pole in front diplom is obviously seen here the clip could not apply so carefully you suture the the uh, pelvis i mean this is the infant diplom at the pelvic region if you take deep bite entire pelvis will get closed that's why ureteric catheter insertion is very useful in hemineptectomy this is the lower pole infant diplom which was clipped and the clip was only half kept now slowly i am going up at any cost the lumen of the ureter should not be compromised now we don't have any fear of warm ischemia now it is only uh, the renal artery is open you need not worry about the time you can take 10 minutes 15 minutes 1 hour also no problem after this any small vessels if identified can be sutured with v lock and then proceed so now i am suturing the uh, pelvic calcial system because the renal artery is open i will coagulate we cannot do any inner outer renography in this case i mean a frectomy and wash identify any small bleeder and then take stitch superficially if you take deep the deep vessels uh, will get involved and then there is no point doing hemineprectomy this is the major uh, uh, drawback if you take deep bites you cannot take deep bites here if at all any bite is taken it should be very superficial repeatedly apply the gauze piece it helps in uh, hemostasis apply lot of saline and wash it helps in hemostasis wait for 5 minutes it helps uh, a uh, disaster not to happen after that also if anything is bleeding this all it's done in open surgery we do with big big sponges so do not hesitate to put the gauze pieces as many as possible and do this see a small bleeder was there very superficial bite you have to take because whatever the vessel that supply small 4 to 5 cm of the upper pole will go waste in the era of uh, nephron sparing surgery this is very very essential especially at the infant diplomar region of the upper pole you should not take deep bite very superficial few mm take two three bites pull the v lock is very very useful any barbed suture is very useful it will just make the tissue approximated that is more than enough for the bleeding to be stopped so at the end we we have taken one bite after injecting the contra uh, the saline one small leak was there you need not go uh, very meticulous about this they usually heal but if you have confidence just apply one or two stitches close to the leak uh, and then come out in these patients if you take deep bite and close the vessel it becomes uh, black on the table the kidney uh, will become black so with this uh, this part is over now we are completely uh, seeing all the pcs and everything last pcs part is again taken a transfixation stitch very superficially if you observe all are taken superficial at the end i have to fix the kidney because this is completely mobilized just for the nephropexy so that this will not cause any problem any person who sees this kidney feels that what is the use there is lot of use because half of the kidney in this case was saved next day doppler we have done it has shown 6 cm kidney with good flow and recessive index less than 0.9 this is the picture at the end and patient did post operatively well you can put omentum along with the colon and then tuck it so with this uh, our first case of hemineprectomy for a complex renal cyst is done so if you see here a drain is kept this is kept in back this is the surface of the kidney you need not be very uh, uh, very liberal in taking out the parenchyma but at the same time if you open the cyst in a bosnac type 3 the entire purpose of the surgery will not be served instead better to wait and watch than doing such surgery so this is the first video this is the picture of the next day uh, um, uh, uh, renal doppler you can see the doppler video 
we always do next day because it is bedside available or in our hospital available radiologist will be there you can see the nice parenchyma corticomillary differentiation you can see the kidney uh, the size approximately measuring up to uh, 6 cm and then no cyst seen and the renal doppler clearly this thickness you can see here a good thickness of approximately 1.5 cm all this information is less important doppler is more important see how the upper pole vessel so nicely supplying all the vessels with the less resistive index indicating that this kidney is viable this patient could not turn up yesterday for the renal angio as well as the as well as the uh, dtps scan i will update in future because it is only 3 months they were from uh, 300 kilometers from hyderabad i thought yesterday i will do renal angio and dtpa i could not do it otherwise patient is doing well now coming to the left i mean lap i mean effect mean one year baby where you see here large upper pole uh, um, uh, dilated it's, it's called uh, uh, upper pole obstructed lower pole refluxing after ruling it out the right kidney is functioning only 20% cystoscopy is mandatory uh, identification of the two ureters is essential if possible in normal ureter you keep the ureteric catheter this is the lower ureter lily water lily sign small baby position is lateral like any other laparoscopy we used nmm port only see we are mobilizing the kidney here this is the liver two retractors may be required in liver complete mobilization of the colon can you see the renal vein stretched over the hydronephrotic upper kidney you should not damage that go close to the go like hydrocel i am doing in the upper pole now i emptied if you have doubt better empty early only see some amount of pus also has come be careful quickly suck it so that the peritoneum does not get infected uh, infected now you scrape like this like hydrocel and remove only the inner layer this is all like uh, hydrocel hydronephrotic kidney wherever it is attached to the kidney you divide it the another important point here is small vessels will come to the upper pole not big vessels but the ureter will be very big see the ureter of this kidney it will go behind the renal vessels as i have represented the schematic diagram it goes behind the renal vessels now i am going below the uh, renal hilum identify the native ureter be careful at any cost uh, the lower pole ureter should not be uh, see this is a large even if you don't identify the lower pole ureter no problem but you identify the ureter and close go close and dissect all and pull the hydronephrotic kidney just below the renal vessels do a little bit above do a little bit below uh, you see here i am detaching the upper pole system from the kidney you can observe the lower pole and upper pole are separated don't be over enthusiastic and the packet the parenchyma of the uh, lower pole it will bleed leave a tag of the tissue uh, leave a tag of the tissue with the lower pole so that lower pole will not bleed because it has normal blood supply see i am very close to the sac this is difficult it is not easy in a small child especially in pyonephrotic kidney and uh, don't try to coagulate the surface of the left over kidney it will bleed this is the experience we have gained if you try to do spatulation and uh, coagulation leave it nothing will happen at this stage i am detaching from the lower pole pulling it everything from below the behind the renal vessels see everything small adhesions this is like exactly like crossing vessel pyeloplasty invert and then pull out and most close structures you cut it off so that the this is the total kidney and the parenchyma very close to the uh, even then better to identify the uh, lower pole ureter before you divide anything very very important that's why we kept the ureteric catheter 
Now close to the hydronephrotic kidney and ureter, we are detaching everything. You need not go very close in the mid ureter, you can divide, uh, you can keep it open. There is no need to clip such a large ureter. See, this is the kidney. And now I am lifting everything and dividing the ureter at this acral level. So with this, uh, we have divided and we can identify the, uh, there is no need to go this slow also. See, this is the normal ureter, which is very close. So don't separate them. See, you can identify the normal ureter here. I have laid open, sucked everything because it was pus. This is essential. See, the normal ureter is glowing. I laid open in the anterior aspect of the uh, dilated ureter and sucked all the pus. This is the dilated upper pole ureter. Just backside of this, closely it is uh, uh, lower ureter, ureter is present, which I have already shown. The ureteric catheter makes it prominent, but at the same time, it may cause injury. The reason for opening is to avoid closed stump syndrome, especially in, uh, this is only lay open. We should never try to reset the ureter. This is only lay open. That's exactly opposite the lower ureter. Every time you have to check and uh, see the pus. Because this is a convoluted ureter, we have to suck out all the pus, go as low as possible and leave it entire thing. After that, patient will not, but don't separate. See, this is the uh, dead uh, upper pole uh, system. Now, I because it's a small chain, I have kept in the bag and removed all the pieces without giving any incision and then kept drain. There is no incision except the port one. So identification of the lower pole ureter and careful dissection of the upper pole uh, close to the uh, kidney and the ureter will save the lower pole ureter as well as the kidney vessels. Now, hemi-nephrectomy in a 84-year-old lady presented with hematuria, diabetic, raised creatinine, lower pole mass, 4 centimeters, I am presenting in this three minutes video. You can see one, I didn't see renal arteriogram is very essential. Even if you get with a CT scan, again, you do renal arteriogram. This is a little older video. The port position and separation is same. Hylar dissection is very important. In the hylar dissection, you identify the main renal artery. See, this is the kidney lower pole separate entire kidney, which I am mentioning repeatedly, don't go closer to the ureter beyond to the surface of the kidney. This is the artery which is separated. This is the branch which is coming from the main artery going to the lower pole. I clipped it. The tumor bearing area has become blue. You can see here that much only I have to reject. So I need not clamp. That's why it is zero warm schema time. For this old lady, I was very happy not to clamp the renal because it has already creatinine is more. In old people, sudden deterioration of the renal function will be there. So this becomes uh, one of the good indication for partial hemi-nephrectomy because uh, 1.6 creatinine in diabetic hypertension and clearly the uh, lower pole only is involved. Now see here completely you can take n, n number of time, n, n amount of time. There is zero warm ischemia time, no clamping. You suture all the, uh, the PCS as well as the inner layer, identifying after flushing with the ureteric catheter. So I am doing inner renorophy here. This is the exactly hemi-nephrectomy to be honest, but fortunate that Complete lower polar vessel was different. In that case, it is easy. In fact, recently we have done heminephrectomy for the uh, for the horseshoe kidney also. In which case, uh, isthmic tumor was there. We have removed entire left kidney and isthmus. Uh, that uh, today time constraints may be there. I may not be able to share. So this is the heminephrectomy classical where zero warm ischemia time is present. And outer layer, nowadays we are not doing this video is two years back. When renal artery is open, 
there is no point doing all this surgery cell and then outer renography because it is not at all bleeding then why should we do this unnecessary so if the parenchyma is not bleeding if the bp is normal at the time of doing this please do not do the uh, outer renography it is not required it is only it may look kidney may look nicely uh, beautiful by bringing the parenchyma which has no use and in fact uh, in aminephrectomy this may take major vessels uh, and spoil the upper part of the kidney because we are dealing close to the hilum that's why avoid outer renography in hemineffrectomy this is a picture now coming this is the lower polar tumor another case this is the lower polar tumor and this case initially we had a pneumoperitoneum going into the omentum you can see here uh, because of the very needle now we will proceed because we have already discussed this lifting the kidney this is on the right side we have shown previously on the left benign cyst now we are lifting everything you should be slow in the initial part when you are dissecting the hilum see i am going towards the hilum right side you should be careful if any injury happens to the renal vein it becomes nephrectomy so people say right port should be 10 mm port at any time to clip it but it is all individual discretion but you should go slow at the angle between the renal vein and the ivc now we have dissected goridal vein is clipped goridal vein is the one which causes trouble lot of the times on the right side now i am mobilizing the entire kidney upper pole which is very essential leaving behind the adrenal gland after the upper pole is mobilized see now i am going towards the separating the ureter as i repeatedly mentioning every aminephrectomy needs separation of the pelvis and ureter in the golden triangle so upper ureteric stricture chances will be there very close to the parenchyma you use see this is the uh, kidney which has upper pole ideally we should have intraoperative ultrasound but if you read carefully ct in aminephrectomy it may not be required as much possible see complete mobilization of the kidney is done the obviously the tumor is seen the posterior or lateral parenchyma cannot be saved to my knowledge if you can lift the kidney up and able to do it then you start the resection always dissect the hilum completely before attempting the hemineffrectomy see i am dissecting the hilum going to the gilvernet fascia so now i am taking sutures and keeping inside before proceeding for the surgery which is the basic essential steps one person will be lifting this is the kidney tumor lower pole on the right side now we are separating all the fat as i mentioned in partial nephrectomy gerotas fascia violation is obvious but don't remove the fat and gerotas on the tumor that is all now i am cutting sorry i forwarded now i am applying the uh, the satin ski mass clamping sometimes you need not uh, suture so lift both upper pole and lower pole like this and then uh, apply satin ski so that the ivc does not get trapped in that you should be careful and this step should be done slowly lot of people do it in hurry and immediately cut it not necessary 30 seconds 40 seconds does not make any difference in fact slower you will have lesser warm ischemia time and now we are going and cutting the kidney exactly in the center and uh, identifying all structures and then see tumor is going close to the hilum and then we divide it after division this is the pcs we are suturing same like in the other two cases we have to suture the pcs because invariably aminephrectomy suturing of the pcs is essential now this is a suturing of the pcs and the inner layer so once the inner layer is done you can directly go to the outer layer this is also one year back video but in the present aminephrectomy we are not doing any uh, outer layer suturing 
So now we are releasing the clamp and observe. See, now we are releasing the clamp. And after releasing, see, this is the keep everything ready and then release the clamp. See, here also, before uh, outer uh, Reno Rafi, we wanted to release the clamp. Clamp is released now, and we are doing uh, after coagulation of the parenchyma. Uh, inner layer, whichever is bleeding, should be sutured. In a turgid kidney, sometimes suturing is difficult, but you should have basic skills. Uh, this is difficult, so you should suture. And small bleeders, you need not worry. Only thing is that hypertension should not, uh, hypotension should not be there at this level because postoperatively it bleeds. Then it is not good. This is the case where we have coagulated the surface, and uh, we kept the setting skin there only. And at the end, we flushed and removed all the clots and identified the surface as clean. See now, the last uh, uh, suture is taken and this half cut surface is uh, clear and visible. And there is no bleeding. So to conclude, uh, the malignant cases will be renal cell carcinoma, benign causes will be duplex collecting system, trauma, non-functioning moiety of HSK, partial kidney, crossed fused renal ectopia, oncocytoma, angiomyolipoma, cysts, and inferior diverticular calliculi. Complications are hemorrhage, blood transfusions, long warm ischemia time, urine leak, prolonged drain, deep venous thrombosis. One should be prepared for all these. The function of the kidney is also, if it is solitary kidney, Heminephrectomy is a very stressful surgery, but as the practice increases, we can attempt. So, heminephrectomy versus lap, uh, lap heminephrectomy versus lap partial nephrectomy, warm ischemia time is almost uh, uh, the 39 minutes and 33 minutes. Median operative time is in uh, heminephrectomy is more, and uh, warm ischemia time is also more, and it is uh, statistically significant. To conclude my talk, Laparoscopic heminephrectomy is challenging and advanced procedure. Variable blood supply and abnormal anatomy of the kidney should be studied with renal arteriogram. Compulsory renal CT angio is mandatory. Even if the patient comes with CT normal, if the creatinine is normal, better to repeat. With careful planning and attention to every detail, wide range of benign renal anomalies in this procedure is very safe and effective for the management. Thank you for patient listening. And uh, if any questions can be taken, because I'm only the speaker today, uh, I have not seen many of the questions. Uh, we will wait for one minute time. And uh, if any questions are there, you can put in the uh, chat box. Otherwise, we will uh, uh, close the talk. And uh, day after tomorrow, we are doing bipolar enucleation of the prostate, but after TIFE, and on uh, Dr. Makrand Kochikar will be talking on 11th also. So we are coming up with international faculty also in pure urology. Please inform your friends to join pure urology and share your knowledge.